Hi crafty friends. I'm using some scraps that are from my table and a piece of A4 watercolour paper. You could also use a piece of cardstock. I'm using watercolour paper as it's a little bit thicker and it can hold quite a bit of paint medium. The idea of today's video is for you to maybe do it along with me and to just let go of any fear that you have of making a mess because we actually are going to just try different techniques on this piece of paper anything we ever wanted to try we're going to put lots of layers use different paints different colors and in the end it's going to be quite a mess it's not going to be a very pretty page but then i want to show you that when you look at it from a different perspective it actually can be really beautiful Sometimes, as a whole, it doesn't look great, but when you make it into smaller pieces, it can be fantastic. I've seen so many of your comments that say that you wish you could be as free as I am when I'm creating. You sometimes have the fear of making a mess and you don't really try anything new because you feel very restricted and very nervous to try something. So this project is exactly for you. We're going to just let go. In the end, it really is just a piece of paper with some mixed media and color on top. What is the worst that can happen, honestly? So I've started by sticking down pieces of collage. These are just pieces that I've had lying around on my desk, pieces of book page, some I've painted little markings on it, pieces of cardstock, music paper, anything you have. You can go with the color scheme if you want, or you can just stick anything down randomly. I'm sort of going leaning towards the blues, and a bit of turquoise and then just the neutral tones. I'm really not thinking about where this is going, I'm just trying to fill all the gaps with a piece of collage paper. Sometimes the scariest part is actually starting. When you have that blank piece of paper or that blank page in your art journal, it is rather intimidating sometimes and this is a great way to break the page. Just start sticking. It'll help you relax and get started in this mixed media journey. I'm using a glue stick to stick my collage down. You could also use gel medium, Mod Podge or craft glue, whatever you have handy. And that's the first step. We have filled the entire page with some collage bits. That wasn't so hard, was it? I'm also going to add a little bit of tissue paper. The tissue paper has got some markings on it and I'm going to add it to my project with some Mod Podge and a paintbrush. You can make your own tissue paper, you can just stamp it with any kind of stamps you have using a permanent black ink or any colour ink. Mine is already printed, it's a Dina Wakely design and I found it on Amazon. Using the tissue paper is a quick way to dull down some colours if they're a little bit too bright like I'm doing with this turquoise piece now. But the tissue paper is not mandatory. If you have some added, if you don't, that's also okay. Next step, I'm going to add gesso. If you're not new to my channel, you know that I love using my gesso. I love the way it tones everything down and how it brings everything together. As I'm doing this, if you look at the difference between the left hand side where I've started with the gesso and the right hand side that doesn't have any yet, you can see how it makes the collage pieces seem as one and everything moves into the background. Again, this is not a mandatory step. If you want to use gesso, you can. If you have it, if you don't, you don't have to. You could also use white acrylic paint if you prefer, or just leave this step out if you like your background to be a little bolder. For me, I like always toning down my background and making it all cohesive. You may ask, why did I bother putting all the collage bits down if I'm just going to cover them up? As you can see, I'm not covering them up totally. They are still shining through. The designs are shining through and it's giving it a beautiful dimension. The look is just softer with the gesso. I'm going to dry this really well and then I'm going to start adding some color. I'm using acrylic paints here. These are the Dina Wakely brand. You don't have to use acrylic paints. You can use watercolor, gelato crayons, colored pencils, inks, whatever you have and pick any color. I just really like this color. I think it's called fuchsia and I'm just randomly putting a drop on. I'm squeezing it on, adding water and just pushing it around. No rhyme or reason. I'm just going for it. Just let go. Just relax and let your paintbrush move around the paper. 
and now I'm making some marks with the same color paint. I'm not adding water, I'm using it directly out of the little bottle and using my flat paintbrush, just making marks here and there. Try different things. You can use a toothpick or the back of the paintbrush. You can use the edge of a ruler to make more straight lines. Just see what's lying around on your desk and dip that in the paint and make marks on your paper. I also really love this dark blue, so I'm going to add this and I've added a bit of water and where there are some puddles, I'm picking those up and then just splashing them on the other parts of the page. Try it all. This is the place to do it. I'm using my colors directly out of their container. You could mix them and make lighter tones, darker tones or make different colors. I'm just using them as is. It's a personal preference. And then something a little brighter, we're putting a bright yellow. It's all looking a little bit like chaos, just the way I like it. Do dry between color applications to prevent everything from blending into one and making a muddy color. And I wanna try one of my favorite techniques, which is from Suzanne Rose Art, where you place down a stencil and then sprinkle through your watercolor powders and add water. And then you press another one on top and you sort of get the negative effect. The watercolor powders I'm using are the Ken Oliver Color Burst. There's also the Brusho brand. I'm sure there's others. These are the two that I have. And that looks great, but this doesn't. It didn't work great. And why? Because the paper isn't totally flat. It's buckled a bit with the collage and the water on the top. So you can sort of see the stencil design, but it's not clear as I'd like it. So that was a fail, but that's okay. I'm going to try it again and I'm going to try and make the paper a little bit flatter. So I'm adding some masking tape to flatten it out onto my work surface. I want to experiment and see if this is going to help. Also adding my heavy water container to try and press everything down. Let's see what happens now. Again, not so great. Well, at least we've tried it and our other piece of paper we've used to press on top can be used for another project because that looks really good. There's still some ink on the stencil, so I'm going to use a baby wipe and just rub over it onto my art piece and then some of that color will come through in some part of the design. Once that's dry, I'm going to use some acrylic markers and color in some of the dots on my tissue paper. Just make some marks on the paper. You don't need acrylic markers, you can use whatever you have. I'm also adding some gold. This is quite metallic, so it's giving it a beautiful sheen. And then just pressing the point down and it creates a little teardrop shape. I'm doing this over the darker colors to create a good contrast so that you can also see it a little better. I'm not going to make some more marks, just some wonky circles using watered down black acrylic paint in a fine tip applicator bottle. Dina Wakely actually has fine tip points that actually screw onto her tubes of acrylic paint so you can actually squeeze the acrylic paint directly from the tube it'll come out a little thicker so it'll be a bit more 3d on your page but it'll get a similar effect i'm also doing some scribbles some of my favorite mark making with this technique Again, just be free and do whatever designs you like. I'm trying sort of leaves in a flower shape. Doesn't look great, but that's okay. I'm also going to add some white accents or marks using a whiteout, also known as liquid paper or Tipex. And this one I'm highlighting the marks I'd made earlier. I'm just going around them. And I think that actually makes a really nice effect. You could also do this with watered down white acrylic paint in the fine tip applicator bottle like I did the black. 
I find this a little easier and the white is a bit brighter. I find when you're using it watered down, you have to water it down enough so it can fit through the fine tip and sometimes it, it's not very concentrated so the colors underneath bleed through. Now this is looking like a fine mess, would you say? I would say yes. Did I have fun doing this? Again, I say yes. Did I learn some things doing this? Again, I'm going to say yes. So far, so good. A few more marks with a different color. I'm using a Posca pen for this. You can of course stop at any point or you can just keep adding. Now it doesn't look like much when it's a whole piece. But we're going to make it into smaller chunks and you'll see how when it's small little sections the little bits are so beautiful and so effective and you can use them for so many things so i'm going to turn it over not to spoil the surprise and i'm going to use my one and a half inch round punch and i'm going to punch some circles we're going to make some embellishments from this like i said the original piece didn't look great but as you turn these over each one is unique and it's always so fun to see what you're getting I'm also punching some smaller ones as I may use those as part of the embellishment. I'm not quite sure yet what I'm going to do. And my favorite part is turning them over and seeing what we have. I don't know about you, but I absolutely love these. I love seeing how the elements from the bigger page have made their way onto some of the circles. They're like teeny tiny works of art. And for now, I'm going to show you how I'm going to make them into little embellishments. I've given them a black edge using a black watercolor pencil. I just dip the point in the water and then go around the edge. This gives them some good definition. I'm going to use some cardstock that's either contrasting or matching each circle. And then I also have a piece of a book, a page from a book that I'm tearing into small pieces. I'm going to do the same technique on each piece, but each one will be different at the tearing will be a different shape and the colors will be different. I don't want to cover up too much of the circle because I love that to shine through so I'm making these pieces a little smaller. I'm then going to tear another piece of cardstock slightly larger than the page paper and I'm going to add that on top of the embellishment too. This is another way to use up scraps that you have so that nothing goes to waste. Once you're happy with your little torn bits, we're going to stick those down. I'm using a liquid craft glue. You could also use a glue stick or hot glue gun or even double-sided tape. I've made mine slightly longer than the circle and I'm having them hang off the one side. You could put it across the middle or you could cut them shorter or have them longer, whatever you prefer. If you'd like to receive one of these as a happy mail from me, just comment below. On Monday, the 18th of September, 2023, I will choose five winners to receive one of these. Although I have six, I've already used one in my art journal, so I only have five to give away. I will randomly choose five people and I will put the name at the top of the description box of this video. So do come back on Monday the 18th and have a look and see if your name is there. If it is, send me an email at shanuki at hotmail.com so I can get your address and send you your happy mail. This is open worldwide. I thought about using the smaller circles that I had punched as part of the embellishment, but then I was thinking it'll be a little bit too busy. I need something a little plainer. I need to use the plain cardstock. So I've just used a pencil to free draw a little heart on the cardstock and then I've put three layers of different colored cardstock so I can cut three hearts at a time just for time efficiency. They're not very symmetrical, they're a little bit wonky which is what I like. And I'm going to add an opposite color. So I'm not going to put the purple heart where the purple little strip of paper is. I'm going to mix them around a bit which will make the heart pop.
the second lot I made are a little smaller, that's perfectly okay. They need to stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to use a black fine liner pen to go just around the edge to just trim them with some black. And where could we use an embellishment like this, especially when you create so many? Well, first you could send them off as happy mail to your crafting friends. You could add them to an envelope. You can add them as an embellishment on your junk journal or art journal page or on a cover. You could put them onto a tag or to an altered playing card. You could use them also as a little mini journal card. You could write on the back and pop them in a pocket. You could add a little hole and put some string and hang it like a tag or for gift, or even your Christmas tree. Before I stick the heart down onto the embellishment, I'm using a piece of black thread. This is just a regular thread you'd use for sewing. I just take a small piece, about 15 centimeters long, and I scrumple it up and pop it underneath the heart. I often do this. I love the texture it creates, and it also creates a good contrast, and also a really good backing for the focal point to help it pop a bit more off the page, or off the background. Now these two hearts, I can't draw on them with a fine liner pen. The one has got a metallic finish, so the pen is not going onto it and I don't have a thin enough Posca pen. And the other one is like a glitter paper. So I'm just sticking them onto a black piece of cardstock and then just fussy cutting around it, leaving a small amount of black showing so it looks like it's been framed. I would really love if you subscribed to my channel and while you're subscribing you can also hit the little bell so you're notified every time i upload new content on my channel you will find art journaling junk journals mixed media and of course this is the home of the full deck challenge I really hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope that you give it a go and just let it go. Let go of the fear of messing up. Just be free. In the end, we're going to turn it into beautiful little embellishments and each one is beautiful and unique. And while we're letting it go, we're trying new techniques. We're experimenting and finding new ways of doing things, finding what works and what doesn't work. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and comment below. Happy creating and I'll see you again soon. Bye.